Note, this video is in no way trying to promote cultism. It's strictly for educational and awareness purposes. Say no to cultism. I ask me. Aye. Aye. Aye, solid ask me. Aye. Hello guys, you're welcome to another beautiful episode of NCM Stories. And on today's episode, I am going to be bringing to you guys something very, very spectacular. Now, before we get into what we have for you guys today, please, if you have not subscribed, like and turn on your notification button, please do that as that will help us to serve you better. When I know as we did do for here now. So, moving in on to what we have for you guys today. Today, we are going to be unraveling the origin of the Black Axe Aye Confraternity. According to Ofyong, the Black Axe, which is also known as the Neo Black Movement, originated at the University of Benin in the late 1970s and can be found at the University of Calabar and other campuses. Its insignia is an upright axe with a wide blade fixed to a short handle, and its motto is Aye. Axemen, Ofyong says that the member's motto, Aye, Axemen, appears on their letterhead while is secular attributed to the black axe and addressed to the University of Ilorin administration was signed the landlords. Ofyong claims that the group's initial goal of promoting black consciousness and fighting for the dignity of Africans and their freedom from neo-colonialism has deteriorated into self-serving behavior that is notoriously and brutally violent. He maintains that violence has in fact become the court official policy. The Axemen's fraternity, name for each other, is Axeneb or the Butcher. And members pride themselves on their willingness to instigate violence on campuses. As members of a confraternity or court, they are recognizable by their clothing. They wear black pants, a long sleeved white shirt, black coats, with the axe insignia on the front and back, and a black beret with a yellow ribbon tied around it. Members are also known to use charms and what Ofion calls fetish rituals to gain supernatural power and protection from rival members and police, a practice that Ofion alleges has led to their ostracism by other fraternities. Now, let's talk about their size of membership. Ofyong attributes the small size of the Black Axe membership, which is estimated to be about 200, to its identification as an ethnic fraternity. New chapters tend to draw members from whichever main ethnic group surrounds the university in which the chapter is located. As an example, Ofyong says that the Igbo and Yoruba make up the bulk of membership at the chapters in the University of Nigeria, Unsuka and Lagos University. More recently, however, a suspected cult member arrested in February 2004 for his involvement in a fatal shooting told police that the Black Axe chapter at the Quara Polytechnic in Ilori had 500 members. Now let's talk about their initiation. Ofyong's portrayal of Black Axe initiation ceremonies echoes a research report published in 2001. Sam O. Sma of the Center of Development Studies at the University of Jos in Nigeria describes the ceremonies as gruesome, bloody, and barbaric, and says that, true to their secret nature, the ceremonies take place in forests or in cemeteries, usually around a bonfire, and involve dancing, singing, drug-taking, and drinking of human blood, and the rape of women. Ofyong adds that, all fraternities initiate new members on Saturdays at midnight. For some cults, initiates undergo what Ofion calls the test of manhood, which involves being flogged, kicked, and hit with belts and sticks while stripped to the pants, before being taken to the island or initiation site. The initiates take an oath of secrecy around a bonfire and put on their fraternity clothes. They are then given a new name and made to sign a membership scroll and provide their thumbprint in blood. Drinking, dancing, drug-taking, 
and drumming begin when the new members are presented to the larger group and end in the early hours of the morning with a procession called the Jolly by the Black Axe to the new members. Now, let's talk about their recruitment. Ofyong says that recruitment into campus cults such as the Black Axe may be voluntary but can be forced. The confession of the suspected Black Axe member arrested in February 2004 whereby he claims to have been forcefully initiated into the group by his friends seems to support Ofyong's contention. Describing their tactics as a mixture of propaganda, misinformation and psychological welfare. Ofyong says the cult mainly target first year students by portraying the university environment as hostile and students as in need of protection. However, According to the newspaper report, cults have recently begun recruiting in secondary schools too. Kingsley Ekwinye, the chairman of the Violent Crimes, Crisis and Cultism Eradication and Management Committee of the National Association of Nigeria Students, says that secondary schools have become a breeding group for young and fresh cultists and that the young students are used to gather information and run errands. The courts apparently advertise with bulletins and assign individual court members the task of befriending potential recruits to convince them to join. They also have application forms potential members can fill out. When security officers at the Enugu campus of the University of Nigeria confiscated a car used by the culprits, in a campus shooting, they found an application from the Black Axe. If, after taking an application form, a would be member does not complete and return it, the court members threaten the person, declaring him their enemy, until out of fear he resents and joins the group. The Black Axe confraternity is now known to operate as an international criminal organization. Among many crimes, it was responsible for the Obafemi Awolowo University Massacre. The original organization of the New Black Movement or the IE Confraternity was started by nine vibrant, energetic undergraduate students from Nigeria. Their names were John Okoje, Nicholas Idemudia, Tukumbo Brown, Uchi Alumona, Mavel Akpoibo, Olagungu Ojo, Bolahon Dosume, Bernard Ojishua, and Godwin Ehijato. These students saw an unjust situation and rose to the equation to meet it head on, with their intention that they want to start this organization in order to address injustice and radical inequality, which they have attempted in order to transform relationships between races and help those who have been traditionally marginalized. Aye, I solid Aye.
Thank you guys so much for joining us on today's episode. We thank you guys for taking the time to check in on NCM Stories. We love you guys so much. And don't forget, if you have not subscribed, click that subscribe button. Turn on your notification icon so that when next we drop another fresh episode of NCM Stories, you guys will never miss out on any of them. Thank you guys so much one more time. And until we meet again, I leave you guys with love, peace, and bye-bye.